In this video, we talk about the mental shortcuts that all of us take in order to navigate through all the information and everything that happens to us on a daily basis, ways we simplify the world for ourselves. Uh, we'll talk about them. And what's interesting about them, however, is that they can cause us trouble. When you're trying to think out of the box, when you're trying to be different, when you're trying to think about some new way to do things and make sure that it works, think through all the issues and everything, sometimes that can cause you quite a bit of trouble when you start using these shortcuts. One of the things that they're, the, the term that's used to describe them is called heuristics. That are, they're simple things, you know, like my, my mother was very good at this, moderation in all things. She had all these uh, various kinds of proverbs and sayings, which when you think about them, they make an awful lot of sense. They're simplifications about how you go about doing this. You, you talk about when you're, um, when you're drinking, you know, one drink an hour is, uh, is okay for driving. If you go more than that, uh, then it's, you start to have the blood content that's higher. You know, you have those kinds of heuristics that may or may not be accurate when you think about it. But we walk around with a lot of these things. They're simplifying assumptions. Um, Herbert Simon, a Nobel laureate in the social sciences, is, uh, is, is one of the people that really did a lot of work on this. He called it bounded rationality, which means that we are not completely, <clears throat> we don't completely <clears throat> think in detail about a lot of these things. Many times we make these simplifying assumptions or these heuristics. One of the most important ones to know about is called the availability heuristic. What that means is we tend to jump upon the first thing that's available. In other words, uh, it, it, this works against you doing something different because if you walk into the, the Starbucks and as we were saying in the prior video and you have this new idea because you've been working on these apps and technologies and video games and you're thinking about the future and everything and then you walk in there and you realize that you now have to live in the real world and pull your wallet out or reach in your pocket or your purse and get a dollar or two dollars or whatever, maybe three dollars for, for a hot chocolate. Um, the fact that you have that possibility available, even though it's not an ideal possibility, the fact that you have that available is an available routine that you can use. And so you reach back and you just do it, right? You live with it and you do it and you go on and you don't think about how things could be different or how it could be better, how one could actually achieve something that's really exciting or different because you have the availability. If something is available, you just take it and do it. This is very common. It's not what other people do. It's what you do, what I do, what each of us do. We follow this, whatever is available, we do. There was an interesting study done, for example, about people in gardening, someone who decides this is a hobby that many people take up as they get older. They decide to do gardening, um, keep them focused and watch the, the plants grow and try to develop a, 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 an aesthetic associated with that. Well, one of the things that they found out is that the most people use the gardening book that they come upon first. In other words, you're walking around and you see in somebody's house or in the bookstore a gardening book. You start to read that and that sort of becomes your Bible. That's what you follow. It's available. It's there. Uh, it's as good as anything else, right? You, it's uh, Herbert Simon used the term satisficing. It's good enough. You use it, right? This gets in the way of innovation, right? Because the first thing that comes to mind is good enough. You use it. So you're sitting with your group and you're trying to figure out how am I going to market my plant, my product? And somebody says, "Oh, we can hand out flyers." Okay. Now there's an idea on the table. Everyone says, yeah, okay, that, that's something we could do. It's available, you take it, you run with it, that becomes your plan. It may not be the best thing. If you're on an online business with people that are that potential customers around the world, around the country, handing out flyers is completely impractical. It limits you to your local environment, not only your local environment, it limits you to people you can put a flyer on their windshield, and that also can get you into trouble legally. Not only that, it could be counterintuitive for the kind of business you're offering. Right? Just to give it with flyers. So the first thing that's available oftentimes gets you into trouble. That's the most important thing to worry about. When you're getting with your teams and you're brainstorming and thinking about your business and how you want to move it, how you want to do your marketing operations, whatever, don't just stop when somebody has an idea. You always want to continue to explore and think outside the box. You actually have to fight this tendency that we all have 
to just go about go out and get your own product or your I mean to, to take the first thing that comes along. This is the, there's some other things to be conscious of that we all have, which this chart calls thinking tilts, things that get us into trouble, like the availability heuristic. In fact, many of these things relate to that particular heuristic. For example, there's this opportun optimistic bias. There's only one reason anyone would ever buy a lottery ticket, and that's because of this optimistic bias. You think that things might be different for you, right? Things happen for a reason. You hear this all the time. This is this optimistic bias. It is uh, the idea that things are going to be good for you. This is not, this defies logic. We actually don't think about this the way we process information. Uh, we don't want to have a realistic perspective on what our chances are of winning a lottery. We would rather believe we might win, even though the odds are stacked tremendously against us, right? This is true when you're starting a business. The chances of succeeding are, are terrible, frankly. The only reason you would start a business is because of opportunity bias, largely. You think, I mean, excuse me, optimistic bias. You think, because I'm starting, you know, this is, this is a big chance. This could be it. We can make this work. I can, I can see how this would work. You can imagine a scenario where it works. The availability bias takes over, and that becomes the scenario that becomes the operating plan, the expected outcome, even though it's very optimistic. So you want to dial that back a little bit. Not so far as you talk yourself out of it, but you dial that back so that you realize that even though you're optimistic about the future, you also have to be realistic and manage the risks, mitigate the risks, create contingency plans, and those kinds of things. Another thing to be cautious of is called the confirmation bias. This is whenever you come up with an idea, you think about an idea, and then you say, okay, I want to listen to other people and get their feeling for this. And so you go ask people about your particular plan. You say to somebody, I have a, an idea for a business that involves an electronic payment in a Starbucks. Uh, what do you think of that? And a couple of people say, I would never do that. I don't know. And you just sort of diss them, think, uh, you know, they don't, really, they, don't really, they don't really get it or whatever. And then somebody says, oh, that would be cool, right? It confirms your opinion. Because it confirms your opinion, you put a higher weight on it and you run with it because you have you tend to high, more highly value information that confirms what you think is the case. That's confirmation bias. It can be very, very dangerous. You go out, you have a stupid idea, you ask a lot of people, they all say, Ugh. they roll their eyes, they don't want to hurt your feelings, whatever. Then one person, one of your good friends, says, oh, I like that. All of a sudden, everybody likes it. You talk about the, 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 the good feedback that you got and you move forward. The third one I wanted to mention specifically here, and there are others, but the third one that I want you to be aware of is the notion called illusion of control. That means that you have a situation where you think because you're doing it, you can change the, the conditions that other people had a problem with, things that got other people into trouble. You have more control than they do. Uh, for example, there might be a situation where you're opening a restaurant and um, the same, you were looking for a location, you find a location that the last four or five people that have run a restaurant, the last several restaurants have failed, but you decide to open a restaurant there also. If you think about that, right, logically speaking, if it hasn't worked in the past, why would it work now? Well, the typical logic is, well, this time I'm doing it, so I'm not going to make the same mistakes that other people make. Right? That's, that's the notion of illusion of control. You think you can control situations that other people can't. Customers that don't like the product, you think that you're going to find customers that do like your message and the like. Those are the sorts of things that you do. So we're going to try something a little bit different on this video. We're going to do a couple of quiz questions that you do during the video. So you take a look at this, this poll question. It says, Janine was launching a new brand of fair trade coffee, was convinced that people would pay an extra dollar per pound of the fair trade label, even though her marketing manager told her that the focus group said they would not pay more. Janine held fast, believing a college friend who told her that she would happily pay an extra dollar. This is an opportunity of what?
Okay, let's go on to the next one. Chris was negotiating a lease for a restaurant that had failed the last three tenants because people had started going to the mall, misspelled. Um, he was certain that he could make the place work because he felt that the past owners just didn't do a good job. This is an example of what? Hopefully uh, you got those answers. Uh, there's also a, uh, the, the standard or the normal quiz following this. Next time, we're going to talk about some, some uh, strategies that you can use to escape from some of these ruts. Remember, you always have to remember this is you. This is not what other people are doing, although they'll see them doing it. You are also in these ruts, the heuristic rut, uh, making heuristics, this availability heuristic. You're, you're susceptible to confirmation bias, optimistic bias, illusion of control. You're susceptible to these as well. So you actually have to discipline yourself, and we'll talk about some strategies for escaping mental ruts in the next video.